It's national meets regional. It's sidewalks entertainment. The long running celebrity. Music. And art series. Join us for a new path to arts and entertainment. Whether it's sketch comedy writing or stand-up, our guests today are a comedic force to be reckoned with as they take on co-hosting duties of a unique game show called Trust Me, I'm a Game Show Host. I have a fact about the letter E. Gadsby, a 1939 novel by Ernest Vincent Wright, has over 50,000 English words, none with the letter E. You mean except for the author's name, right? Yeah, that doesn't count. <laughs> The rest of the book, no words with the letter E in it. I don't, can, no one can say a sentence without saying I any. could, I could absolutely do that. Okay, try. DL, you suck. <laughs> that was pretty good, that was pretty good. Not that hard. I'd like to welcome DL Hughley and Michael Ian Black to Sidewalks. Hey. Hey Hi, guys, Andy. it's so great to have you with us today. Thank you. here. So tell me a little bit about kind of where you're from and how each of you got started as comedians. You want to go? Well, I'm, a, I'm from Los Angeles and I, I started uh, doing comedy. I was like, I was in a barber shop and these cats, they used to, you know, do taxes and sell weed and cut hair. And, <laughs> and so they, and the concert promotes. It's just like my barber shop. <laughs> right. Isn't right. that funny? <laughs> so they said, uh, and I would always be in there and I'd be cracking jokes and talking about people. So they said, if you think you're so funny, we're doing this concert. Um, and I, they let me open. I picked up a microphone and loved it ever since. And I, uh, I started doing comedy in college. I started a sketch comedy troupe called The State and we ended up with our own show on MTV. And then it's just been a rocket ride since then. Well, as comedy writers, where do you kind of come up with your source material? Is there some sort of a, you know, is there a typical place you go, material that you like to use when you're writing? Where, how, does that, how does that happen? I think, the, I, I, I think you always want to draw from what provokes any kind of reaction from you, whether it's love or hate, just something that makes you feel something that you can then translate back to the, to the audience. As long as it's clear, it just has to, it, like, like he's saying, it's got to be indelible, it's got to hit you, and it's just got to be kind of clear. And I, I just kind of take things, like you can't write the kind of comedy that you're seeing right now. Like, I, like OJ's back in the news, but he's so big now. Uh, he went from OJ to Mountain Dew. It's just not, <laughs> I, so, so I, just, I, I just think you, there are things that are so stark you can't help but talk, uh, uh, you know, approach it from a comedic vantage point. Presidential Spawn. Okay. President John Tyler born in 1790, has two grandsons alive today. Speaking of presidential offspring, the daughters of the president, Natasha and Malia Obama, have the same middle name, Athena, after the goddess of wisdom. Here's how it worked, all right? John Tyler was born in 1790. He was married twice. He had kids with his second wife when he was in his 60s. Then one of his sons had kids with his second wife when he was in his 70s. If you do the math, which I haven't done, it makes perfect sense. <laughs> Those people would be nine million years old right now. <laughs> the powerful middle name is a tradition in Michelle's family going back to her great grandmother. And I can uh, actually show you their birth certificates. Just don't ask for the long form, and I'm telling you, that's those are the ones. All right. You've heard both of our statements. Yes. Ambry, who do you trust? Well, one of the reasons that you're here today is that you are co-host of a game show called Trust Me, I'm a Game Show Host. Now, I'm not too sure I can trust right. you guys, but you got to tell me, what is this show about? Well, it's it's... It's a very simple concept. There's two hosts per episode, one contestant per episode. Each round, DL and I will each present the contestant with a fact. One of us is telling the truth, one of us is lying. Contestant just has to figure out who's doing what, and if they get it right, they win money. Yeah. It's the only job we get have where we would lie to people's face and not be a congressman. So it's... Uh... <laughs> now, DL, is that kind of what you like about this format? 
I, I like that it's edgy and that it's something, uh, you know, that I've never seen before. And I also like that um, it's the first time I've never seen this kind of banter back and forth between uh, co-hosts. But it, it's really kind of all the, the, the things that you say a, a game show is supposed to be. It's kind of, it's, it's not that. It's just like we lie. We li it's, just, it's very, uh, I think it's, uh, like I said, the most interesting concept for a show I've seen. It's as, much, it's as much a comedy show as it is a game show. I mean, DL and I are just constantly trading jokes back and forth, joking with the contestants. The contestants are joking with us. And, you know, and then there's money involved. So it's fun. And it's fun to play along with. It is. Now, do you guys get really competitive with each other? Like, is that something when you're on set that you go back and forth sure, with? Sure, sure. I mean, you want, ultimately, anybody wants to win. Um, uh, I think that that's, that's part of the fun of the game. Everybody kind of, that, that's, uh, I think, what anchors you in is that everybody has an investment in trying to win. And fortunately, I was much better at it than the <laughs> L. Yeah. <laughs> I think, naturally, they just think I don't, I, I'm a liar. <laughs> they just go, I don't trust this guy. Well, look at the way you're dressed. It's the you're, hat. Dre you're dressed like a gangster. It's the hat. You're dressed like a 1930s gangster. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> I just walk off the set of Boardwalk Empire <laughs> to a game show. Well, this is a co-production with Mark Burnett. You know, he's responsible for the mega successful shows like The Voice, Are You Smarter Than a Fifth Grader? So I'd say you guys are in pretty good hands. And as what usually happens when I'm talking, we're running out of time. So as we kind of wrap things up today, uh, do you have any career advice for those rising young comedians who are coming up behind you guys? I think you got to know, you don't have to know what you will do, just know what you want. So I, I think that comics go into, like any other art form, go into it for all kinds of reasons. You just kind of got to know why you're doing it. That's good advice. Yeah. Thank you both so much for being with us today on Sidewalks. DL, Michael, it was a pleasure to have you. I wish you guys all the best. Thank, Thank you, Cindy. Cindy. For more full-length celebrity interviews, visit SidewalksTV.com.